Welcome to the eLaborate Topics Podcast, where we focus on lab-specific strategies for medical laboratory professionals. We're proud to be the healthcare detectives that work behind the scenes to get the results needed to influence medical decisions. Let's grow together and jump right into the lab. Hi, friends. Welcome to eLaborate Topics. I am your host and leadership mentor, Tywana Wilson. If this is your first time tuning in to eLaborate Topics, thank you for tuning in. It is a weekly podcast that offers practical and technical tips that you can use both inside and outside of the lab so that you can excel in your career and be totally awesome like I know that you can be. Myself along with my co-hosts Lona Small and Stephanie Whitehead bring you these engaging topics along with our amazing guests that we have week after week. Today is no different. I have something really practical for you. Sometimes you have to get back to the basics and so I want to talk about four simple steps that you can use to increase your leadership whether you're on the bench or you are in a supervisory or leadership role. It's never too late to increase your leadership skills and it doesn't matter what title you have or what credentials you have behind your name. As medical laboratory professionals, we should always be learning, growing and increasing our skills. And it doesn't just happen. You have to be intentional about increasing those leadership skills. So let's jump right into it. So when people think about the word leadership or they hear it, sometimes they think of political officials or they think about CEOs or even military commanders or athletes. While it's true that you need to have good leadership skills to excel at these occupations, Leadership is a valuable skill that really everyone from any industry, vocation or background can use for their benefit and for the benefit of others. And while popular belief would have you think that it just comes naturally for for some people and that leaders are born, they're actually made. And so the more that you develop and pour into your leadership, the better you are. There may be some things that you are naturally good at that you don't have to work as hard at, but in order to really get great and perfect your leadership, you have to invest in it. So luckily for you, there are several methods that you can use to build and refine your leadership skills. So whether you use these in the lab on the bench or you can use these at home with your family and friends, discover the leader in you because we all are leaders. So here's some techniques that you can boost your leadership leadership skills. The first one is strive for excellence. Being Being a successful leader is having the ability to set the bar for yourself and for others. You can be a good role model by constantly seeking ways to improve yourself and aspire to excellence. A hallmark of leadership is excellence. So work on honing your existing skills and developing new ones. So what does this look like? This could be where you take on additional technical classes that you're not strong in. A big one for laboratorians is Excel that would help you in your leadership. With Excel, you're able to put together charts and pull data together and tell stories of your volumes, your productivity. And so having that skill in Excel can strengthen your leadership. And so that's one way of striving for excellence. Another leadership skill that you can strengthen is being decisive. Effective leaders are those who can make decisions very quickly with the information that they have. And so this may look like putting yourself in situations in which you have to make more decisions where you have to 
take the information that you have and, and make a decision, understanding that you may not have all the pieces of the puzzle. The only way to be a better decision maker is to make more decisions. So that's a way that you can strive for excellence and hone in on your existing skills, your problem solving ability, your relationship or team building ability or other key ways that you can strive for excellence and hone in on those skills. And one thing that I, I think it's kind of like a secret and it's as a leader being able to ask great questions or even the right questions. And that will take you a long way. I've been in many meetings and have many email correspondence where it seems like we have gotten down a rabbit hole. And part of it is because not taking a step back and making sure that the right questions are being asked. So if I could tell you to do one skill to really sharpen is definitely get good at asking questions that's going to get you the response you're looking for. So you want to ask those open-ended questions, those situational based questions, not just a, a yes or no, or a closed ended question. So that's one thing, striving for excellence. The second thing that you can do to increase your leadership skills is to focus on your vision and set goals. And I know that we hear that a lot, setting goals, focusing on your vision. But it's true. You really have to consider what you want to accomplish in different areas of your life and setting goals that will help you achieve your vision. This could be your vision for your career. This could be the vision for your team. This could be the vision for your family. But you really have to set vision and then set goals to move your team, your family, yourself, your career forward. And setting these goals where you're able to periodically measure your performance and progress. So breaking those larger goals into smaller ones so that you can celebrate your successes and maintain your motivation. This is going to be huge as you start to develop and increase your leadership skills. One of the books I recently finished reading was Atomic Habits by James Clear. And if you haven't read this book already, it is an awesome read. It really gets to the core of being able to form easy and proven habits and break some of the bad ones that you may have. And so focusing on those key things that you can do to start that habit. And this is very important when you're trying to reach your goals and you're setting those action steps for yourself. Because sometimes we just look at the big overall vision and then we falter in the action steps to reach that vision or reach that goals. And so in Atomic Habits, it, it teaches you small things. And one of the things for me that I wanted to be intentional about is making sure every morning that I had my time for uh, prayer and meditation before I start my day. And so what I found is that I was it seemed like there wasn't enough time. I was running late and, you know, things would come up. And so one of the things or the strategies in the book, Atomic Habits, was make it easy, create easy cues for yourself. And so for me, I, one of the things that I do so that I'm set up for success to be able to have that morning meditation time is I, when I get up, I grab my phone. Once I get myself together, I'll grab my phone and I'll take it to my office and I'll turn the light on and I'll sit it in one spot. And that's my routine every single day. And that routine signifies for me that, yes, I go back into my office. I have my phone. I have my my uh, my Bible app on my phone. And that's the signal for me to do my meditation and things like that. So start with some of the easy cues. Another th a thing that he mentioned in the book was people that want to say run marathons. 
And the, the easy cue would be putting on your running shoes. So when you put on your running shoes, that is the cue for you that you're going to train or you're going to go do some jogging, not the you have three miles to run or 10 miles to run or 20 miles to run. The cue is putting on your tennis on your running shoes. And once you get in that habit of, okay, putting on my running shoes, that's what activates the rest of the, the pyramid, if you will. So that's the same thing for your vision and your goals. When you think about your leadership skills, maybe for you, it could be grabbing your pen and journal. So that could be a cue for you that every time you grab your pen and journal, you know that you're going to write down your goals. You're going to write down your steps to reaching your vision. So you have to create that kind of cue to set off for being able to focus on your vision and goals. So in that vision and goals, like I said before, you want to set your goals where you're able to measure your performance and progress. You want to break them down, the larger goals and the smaller ones so that you can celebrate and your wins along the way. So I, as I was telling you about meditating and I actually have a chart uh, for each week, each day. And I started this eight weeks ago. And I, every day I mark off my reading and my meditation and I celebrate because I look back and I said, wow, I remember when I didn't have time or I said I didn't have time, but here we are eight weeks later and I have created a positive habit for a goal that I set for myself. You can also learn to identify and use all of your resources in the pursuit of your goals. I am guilty of this because I have resources that that has the answers that I need that I have not always utilized. So don't think you have to go the journey alone. There are resources out there that you can utilize. So it could be you are trying to get promoted or find a new opportunity, but you don't know how or where to start. You probably have resources, your manager, your team leader, your mentor, your coaches, whoever that can help you get started. But are you going back to asking the right questions? Are you asking the right questions of the right people that can help you along your journey? Making the use of all your resources. If you know that you are trying to pass your MLT or MLS certification and you're struggling, but you're not fully utilizing your resources. So maybe your textbook isn't helping. Maybe it's a recent graduate that you're working on the bench with who recently took the test. Maybe they can offer you some insight or, or tools that maybe you didn't think about. So consider all of your resources when you are working towards your goal goal of getting promoted, goal of passing your MLS MLT certification exam. And it's always easier to work with the resources that you have in, in your current sphere rather than developing plans based on resources and circumstances that you wish were reality. Start with what you have and then go from there. Don't try to plan your goal or vision around something that you don't have at the moment or contact that you don't have. Because if you do, then it's going to make it a little bit difficult to start seeing some traction. And as we know, if we don't see traction, guess what? We usually stop and, and don't continue forward. And be willing to refine your plans and ultimate goals based on your progress. And, and that's really in your career and your dreams. So be willing to refine your plans as necessary. When I was thinking about the focusing on your vision and goals, it made me think about this quote by William Penn. And it says, time is what we want most, but what we use worse. And 
for those of you who don't know, William Penn is an English Quaker leader and advocate of religious freedom who oversaw the founding of the American Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. He was valued, he valued freedom and self-reliance. But here's the big idea behind that quote and, and the reason why I say that in regards to focus on your vision and goals is because you're going to be tempted to say you don't have time. You're going to be tempted to say that you don't have time to work on this. You got other things that you need to do. And here's the big idea. We take for granted the most precious resource that we have, yet we complain all the time of not having enough time, which is a classic problem. So, so as you're tempted to say, I don't have time to increase my leadership and time to go for my vision and, and goals, just remember that quote by William Penn and time is what we want most, but what we use worse, because that's the difference between those who lead and those who struggle is the whole use of their time. Those who excel and those who are average. The, the biggest difference is the way that they utilize their, their time. The third step to increase your leadership skills is to develop your people skills. Leaders are known for their ability to inspire others to work towards a common goal. To be successful at, at inspiring others to work with you, it's important to develop your people skills and emotional intelligence. Developing your people skills take work. You don't just wake up and become the person that everybody wants to be around. You don't just wake up and become a good listener. You don't just wake up and become the people's champion. You have to increase your leadership skills, especially in the people arena. So here are some ways that you could develop your people skills. Learn how to listen. Doing so helps to establish a connection and build camaraderie and trust so others are more likely to follow your lead and help you. John Maxwell says, he has his uh, book that everybody communicates, few connect. And so learning how to listen and connect with your team. I was recently at church and one of the things that uh, my pastor said was that he had an opportunity to be in a room with a influential leader. And he said when he got in that room, he only had like 10 to 15 minutes. And one of the things that he did is that he went in and the leader that he got in to, to meet with just he kind of listened and let uh, my pastor drive that meeting. And so my, my pastor went in and asked a lot of questions of that influential leader. He didn't spend his time talking about himself. He wanted to really learn from that leader and everything that helped them be successful. And so he learned how in that moment, he learned how to listen and knew that it wasn't about him or talking about what he could do. And so learning how to listen, that is a essential skill because we like to talk sometimes and not always like to listen. Helping others to be their best is another way of developing your people skills. Part of being a good leader is motivating others towards the positive change. Somebody is waiting for you to help them be their best. If you have children, you know your children depend on you to help them be their best and cultivate their excellence. If you have team members, they are waiting for you to help them be their best. Sometimes people don't even know what excellence they have in themselves until somebody else pointed out. So developing those people skills, and it doesn't matter if you are a student, if you are a tech on the bench, a phlebotomist, a courier, a processor, developing your people skills is going to be essential for you, no matter what role you play in the organization. 
If you learn how to listen and you help others be their best, that is going to take you far. And then the last step that I'll leave you with today to increase your leadership skills is to be passionate and maintain a positive attitude. Huge. Most of us take cues from others and social situations. So you can teach others how to have a positive attitude and to be passionate in their efforts by doing so yourself, modeling the behavior you want to see. Because like attracts like. It's the whole law of magnetism. You attract who you are, not who you would like to be. So if you are positive and upbeat and passionate, you're going to attract people that are positive, upbeat and passionate. If you have a a bad attitude, you are kind of a negative person, you're a half empty cup type of a person. Those are the kind of people that you're going to attract. And you're probably thinking, okay, well, how does this relate to me and my team? As the leader of the team, you attract the kind of people that you are. And so if you want to have a team of positive and upbeat people, then you need to be a positive and upbeat person. I know for me, I will take somebody that has a positive attitude over somebody that has the skill any day because I can train you on skill. I can't train you on having a a positive attitude. And uh, if your attitude and you're willing to learn and grow and develop and be a good team member is not there, it doesn't matter how good you are technically. It doesn't matter how much skills you have, because that is not going to be able to move our team forward. That's going to tear our team apart and it's going to create morale issues. And so that positive attitude, maintaining an upbeat attitude and giving your best effort helps to energize the entire team. So everyone is able to accomplish more regardless of the circumstances. And you know when somebody has a a positive attitude, it makes you just want to be around them. And so having that positive attitude is essential. So let me recap the four simple steps that you can use to increase your leadership skills today. Quite frankly, leadership skills is a non-negotiable. If you ask today, every Every interview you probably go on, they're going to ask about your leadership. And it doesn't matter the role that you're in. If you are going out for a scholarship opportunity, if you're a student, they're going to ask you what kind of leadership skills you have or what kind of leadership roles you have had. And so this is something that really will help you take your career to the next level, as well as increase and enhance your personal life. So the four steps were one, strive for excellence in everything that you do. A hallmark of leadership is excellence. The second was focusing on your vision and set goals. So you can't go for something you can't see. It's hard to achieve and climb the mountain if you've never set that as your vision. So focusing on your vision and setting your goals, making sure that you identify and use all of your resources that you have available to you, creating atomic habits to be able to reach those goals. Make it simple for yourself. Maybe it's putting your journal in a certain spot that you know that you have to pick it up every day. Maybe it's going to a certain room every day. Maybe it's grabbing your favorite pen every day that sets off that cue of reactions to be able to accomplish some of those goals. Developing your people skills. This is a, a listen, it's a non-negotiable. You can't say, I'm not, I'm not a people person. Like then why are you working with people? Why are you working in an environment if you're not a people person? Learning how to listen and helping others. That's what leaders do. They listen, they mentor, they model, they mentor. 
So listen and helping others be their best. And the last thing is being passionate and maintaining a positive, upbeat attitude. The reason why you don't have positive, upbeat people on your team is probably because your team doesn't have positive and upbeat people already on it. And if you do attract a person that's positive and upbeat and your team doesn't have those dynamics, they won't be on your team long. So maintaining a positive attitude is essential. Taking the time to develop your leadership skills can radically increase the amount of success that you experience in all areas of your life. These tips can help you to hone your leadership skills so that you can achieve your goals and enjoy a more satisfying life in the laboratory, on the bench and off the bench. So I hope you were able to Use these practical skills to increase your leadership. Please share it with a fellow medical laboratory professional so that they can get on the track to doing these simple things to start to get success today in increasing their leadership skills. If you haven't already, please share this out with a fellow medical laboratory professional and share with us what interesting tidbit that you got from this podcast. If you want to be featured on our social media, if you want us to show a video of you saying what you got from this episode or any of the episodes that we have done, please see the link in the bio, the, in the link in the show notes. If you want to be a guest on this show, you can also fill out the guest interest form, which you will find in the show notes. And until next time, I hope you have an amazing week. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Elaborate Topics, where your hosts discussed relevant strategies for laboratory professionals. Please subscribe to this podcast on your favorite podcast platform and listen to us on directimpactbroadcasting.com. Stay tuned for another episode with information you can use to excel in your laboratory career.